Well. How did you say that, you know, regardless of situation or circumstance, I'm going to be happy, I'm going to leave? Like, what was that moment in your divorce where you're just transitioning? And partially why I want you to share this, because there could be someone in the audience watching that is sitting on that, that fence of... I don't know if I'm able to do it. I know definitely at that t I went through the same thing. I knew, I know if I heard more women talking about it's okay, it'll be okay. Obviously I'm fine now, but it, if it would be okay, then it would have been easier to make some of that decision probably sooner than, you know, the prologuing and the, the trial and <laughs> the holding on, the codependency that comes with that. Um, well, you know, sometimes your friends ask you, like, what is enough enough? And I think I pretty much just had enough. <laughs> yeah. I tolerated a lot. You asked yourself that question too, so did I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When is enough is when enough? When is enough enough? And I tolerated so much to the point where I thought, okay, who am I? Like, who is this person? How can I sit here and say that I'm a Heaney Smith or that I'm a child of God or that I'm a, a strong person and sit there and endure all of the crap? <laughs> that I was tolerating. I said enough. Um, at the time, everyone thought I was insane because I was living a pretty good lifestyle. Um, you know, he made good money and I was a stay-at-home mom. But I had enough. Well, you and I have that same sh similar story, you know, whatever. That's, it's sad when you think about it sometimes that people believe that holding on to the white picket fence is better than actually being happy just to upkeep this image. What has that meant to you to bear witness to yourself and your kids watching you go through this? I think one of the greatest rewards is just watching and it's listening to my, my kids' reaction of this whole experience. I mean, having my first child at 17, it was kind of like, okay, am I, I have options. End up on welfare or stay at home with mom or try and make it on my own. And now I'm at this point where I actually have a 17 year old. <laughs> and, you know, she thinks I'm the coolest mom on the planet. And then I have a 13 year old who this weekend being featured at her school because she did a whole project on her mom. So it's, that's the greatest reward. I don't really, I can't say I don't care about anything else, but everything else is just a bonus. Family is so important to you, and I'm so glad that your kids were able to be here tonight. I want to thank you for um, being featured. Thank you for choosing me as your publisher for A Walk in My Stilettos. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. The um, book signing portion of, of uh, McKinney's book is about to take place. Although you're out of breath and can't speak My people, I can feel your heartbeat Although your fire signs seem weak Remember I can feel your heartbeat Remember I can feel your heartbeat My people I can feel your heartbeat Although I can't feel your heartbeat My people I can feel your heartbeat Stand up my people Stay alive my people I can feel your heartbeat You know that I can feel your heartbeat Stay alive my people I can feel your heartbeat Kim Davis uh. Mm -hmm. My people, I can feel your heartbeat Yeah, 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 yeah